As U.S. companies brace for possible cyber attacks from Russia, lawmakers are pushing for more online protection. On Tuesday, the Senate passed the Strengthening American Cybersecurity Act, which would update cyber laws and improve coordination between federal agencies. To talk more on this, let's bring in Adam Isles. He is Chertoff Group Principal and Head of Cybersecurity Practice. Adam, there's certainly a lot of concerns here that what we're seeing on the military front could really spill over on the cyber front. How significant are the risks if we're talking about attacks coming in from Russia? Yeah, so um, in a sense, the cyber war has already started. I mean, Russia has for years now incorporated uh, you know, cyber attacks into its military strategy. Um, and even before the invasion, you know, we'd seen the use of distributed denial of service attacks and what's known as a wiperware, uh, you know, uh, you know, thankfully kind of contained, um, you know, to, to, you know, the area of, of, of the invasion as opposed to more broadly. So, so we're seeing that, you know, in terms of things that increase the risk, you know, I, I think we've got two major factors here, right? One is the kind of lack of an off ramp uh, in, in the, in the actual physical conflict. Um, and two is, you know, what I'd refer to as, as the use of surrogates um, or kind of almost crowdsourcing, which kind of, you know, it, it extends the scope of the conflict, if you will. It, in, in a way, um, you know, the, the, you know the, the tremendous spate of ransomware attacks we all experienced over the last couple of years, um, you know, the, the silver lining in that is it's, it's, you know, it has raised the level of security, you know, on, on the part of, uh, you know, many companies a bit. Um, but um, you know, this is a, a period of, uh, you know, significantly increased risk. Adam, it's Brian Chung here. You mentioned surrogates. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Is that like a third party that could be uh, hacking um, United States targets, for example? I, I guess elaborate a little bit exactly what that terminology means. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, so on the one hand, you know, within Russia, uh, certain ransomware groups, I mean, the Conti ransomware group has already come out and said they're going to be supportive uh, you know, of, of Russia and retaliating against any, uh, you know, uh, cyber tradecraft coming in from the West. Now, in, interestingly, Conti itself has been hacked. And so we're learning a, a huge amount about, uh, you know, that threat actor group. Um, but Ukraine has also called for an army of cyber defenders, uh, you know, to help stave off attacks. Um, and um, we have seen groups um, actually attack the Belarusian railroad um, to slow down, uh, you know, Russian advances uh, into Ukraine. Adam, you've highlighted one of the key risks here, which are super spreader um, events or potential for super spreaders. What does that look like? Well, I, you know, to use it, um, I'm a Star Wars fan. And so I kind of think of Order 66, you know, which is, uh, uh, you know, where, where um, you know, clones were kind of converted into, you know, Jedi hunters, uh, you know, by, by an order for the, from the emperor. But it, the basic idea is you have... Um, um, if you think back to the solar winds compromise uh, that we all learned about about a year ago, situation where when software that's widely dispersed is itself compromised, either because malware is inserted into it or it's because there's an exploitable vulnerability that's leveraged, you have the ability to have an effect across you know, a very large number of victim organizations. That's what a super spreader event is. Uh, so what can companies do um, to prevent these types of attacks and breaches. I mean, obviously, cyber is something that it's mostly reactive. It's hard to be preventative because you don't know what the nature of the attack is going to look like. But knowing that there are some serious parties overseas that are interested in doing this type of thing, how, what can companies do to defend themselves? Yeah, so I think that there's a cybersecurity piece and there's a business continuity piece, right? So from a cybersecurity perspective, what we're really looking for is a level of transparency, accuracy, and precision in, in terms of um, you know, how we're defending ourselves. So we're looking for a threat informed defense that says, um, you know, let's assume, you know, that there's some level of initial access that's been actually achieved. What does that mean for the rest of the organization? We're looking for, a, you know, kind of a continuous level of testing and validation. And and CISA, you know, that is the uh, U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has, has some pretty meaningful guidance out there, uh, you know, on these points. But it's also important to understand that this is a business continuity issue as well, which is to say. Um, you may be fine, but there are other organizations in your supply chain that may themselves be impacted. And so what level of redundancy, what level of resiliency planning uh, do you have to factor in uh, that contingency? And Adam, you know, we talked about this new bill that passed the Senate uh, at the top here. And it, on the one hand, you know, you've got lawmakers that are taking action now through this 
uh, strengthen American Cybersecurity Act. And yet, it, you know, it occurs to me that we're talking about this in 2022. The war with Russia and Ukraine, it's already underway. What does that say about the inaction in the U.S. and how vulnerable some of the, the critical infrastructure is? I think you really have to look sector by sector about it, right? And, you know, what's what's interesting, right, is you've got, you know, legislation that's about to pass that would require critical infrastructure operators across multiple sectors um, to, uh, you know, r report, um, um, you know, substantial cyber incidents within 72 hours and ransomware payments within 24 hours. That comes on top of sector specific requirements that are already out there, right? So banking, for instance, um, you know, um, already has a requirement to, to do that for, for material events. Um, you know, if we look at the pipeline, rail aviation sectors, TSA has put out a similar requirement. Um, so we're, um, you know, we're, and, and we're waiting for, you know, the Securities and Exchange Commission to issue notice proposed rulemaking, you know, that would um, likely have a similar requirement for publicly traded companies. Um, I think what we're trying to get at here is is, is really again, you know, issues of, of cybersecurity and 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 business continuity, which is to say, you know, in the aviation sector, we've you know been reporting on aviation safety incidents for years, and and that's helpful, right? Because it helps us prevent future aviation incidents. And what we're trying to do is the same in in, in cybersecurity, right? The more we can understand about the tradecraft that was used, the impact, uh, the more we can defend against uh, you know um, uh, future attacks. And particularly with respect to impact, the more we can uh, uh, take actions to, to mitigate those impacts. Um, so that's what the legislation is trying to accomplish.